All right, hello people, how are y'all doing? This is Andre from the Peace Talks Podcast. I am here with today, have an interview. Um, Kenny Johnson. Oh, you want me to keep going? Uh, um, I'm a PhD candidate at Florida State University in the Department of English, and I study African American Literary and Cultural Studies. All right, and as we said last week, we are live at the Hip Hop Symposium. So, can you tell us a little bit about the event y'all were just having up here? Okay, so, um, there was a few panels back to back. Um, we're basically doing this symposium that deals with the ideas of hip hop and higher education and kind of how they intersect um, pedagogically, um, dealing with social justice and all of those things. Um, so, yeah. All right. And who are some of your favorite hip hop artists? Oh, um, I did a presentation on Vic Mensa. He's one of my favorite rappers. Um, I'm from Florida, so I'm always loyal to Trick Daddy, Trina, right? Um, but I'm also a big fan of Jay Z, Nas, um, Queen Latifah, MC Light. Um, I'm an '80s baby, so uh, that kind of it's kind of wide. It's a wide range of who I like, but. If I had to say I had a favorite, it'll be Vic Mensa that's current, but like Trick Daddy is, that's home. Yeah. <laughs> how, how important do you think hip hop is on society? Um, I mean, I think that hip hop is so ingrained in society these days that, you know, when we think about American culture, so much of that is linked to hip hop. Um, at one point, you know, it was kind of like this subculture, but now hip hop is a full blown global culture, right? You can see the influence um, of hip hop in literally every corner of the globe, right? Um, and so much of who I am and, and so much of what I do and who my students are, they are very much children of hip hop. I mean, it's in, you know, the clothing, it's in rap snacks, right? It, the influence of hip-hop is literally everywhere. The things we say, the things we do, the places we go, right? Cars, all of these things are, all of these industries are directly influenced by hip-hop culture. So, yeah, you can't, you can't really get away from it at this point. Now, recently we just had a loss in the hip-hop community, Nipsey Hussle. Yeah. How do you think his death will impact the culture moving forward? I think that what I've seen on, you know, social media is this move toward Nipsey the man and what Nipsey was trying to do in the community. And even though people talk about that a lot, hopefully, you know, we start to adopt some of those things, right? Um, I feel like he had the blueprint, right. in, my, in my humble opinion. Yeah. It was like, he started locally, mm -hmm. he grew his roots, yeah. and then he branched out and then came back. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, he kept his identity throughout all of it, which is something I feel like in the community like kind of gets frowned upon yeah like it's like i feel like it's a stigma to where if you like get that amount of success mm -hmm. then you have to leave you know what i'm saying right. because it's like there's like animosity you feel you yeah know what i'm saying and i i feel like that has to change you know what yeah I'm saying? i mean he's this really good example of you know someone who you know he came up in the gang life right? right and and his identity is very much tied it was very much tied with him being in a gang mm -hmm. but being able to separate that and saying you know i'm gonna do good for the community where gang culture is so it's so violent right it's so criminalized it's so villainized in the media because you know violence does happen right but he was somebody that didn't lose that identity. He was, he, that identity has always been there. He, ne he didn't necessarily separate himself and say, you know, I'm not affiliated with that anymore. Like, till the day he died, people knew what, you know, what set he rolled with. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's important too, because so often in hip hop, people are, they're forced to kind of separate themselves and kind of disentangle their identities and who they are. Um, so hopefully that that kind of authenticity that he had and you know this this will to give back to the community in spite of anything that's going on right hopefully we can follow like you said follow that blueprint mm -hmm. so i, I mean like it it's a, a big lot loss to learn. it was just yeah. a lot to learn from because all right, how, i mean personally how i found out about nipsey was from his rollout with victory left yeah and what 
the music didn't even turn me on to him. It was like what he was doing as an entrepreneur, as right. a businessman, trying right. to establish a brand. Because that was motivation for me right. in the position I'm in. I'm about to be a senior. Oh, I am a senior. Mm -hmm. And like, <laughs> just graduating and trying to figure out what there is to do, yeah. you know what I'm saying, out here for somebody who's really trying to make it. Yeah. And I felt like he had a lot of the things that I wanted to be. Yeah. And he had, he was in the midst of attaining it. So right. it was like, you could resonate with that because right. you felt like, okay, he's got a head start, but yeah. he's providing a way for me to follow, you know what right. I'm saying? I mean, they said he died on the way. He was at his store because I think a homeboy of his or something had, you know, gotten out of jail. And so he was going to his store to, like, get him clothes, you know, so he could be okay. And that's when he got shot, right? And so you think about him dying in the process of this very charitable act, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a really weird ju juxtaposition. And I think that a lot of people were really caught off guard because he was just starting to break into the mainstream for music, right? But a lot of people have been following kind of like his philanthropic work or whatever. So it's a huge loss, man. Like a lot of people are really devastated. It, it really came out of nowhere. Um, and I remember my friend was like, oh, Nipsey Hussle got shot. And I was like, well, dang, that sucks. But I didn't know he died, right? And then they were like, nah, he died. And I was like, man, like, you know. So it, hopefully a lot of people can kind of hopefully people can gain something from this right that you know one of one of my mentees was talking about how he's been feeling very mortal and i was telling him you know the only thing that we can we can say for sure that's going to happen is that we're going to die right mm -hmm. and you have to live every life uh, live, live every day of your life you know making an impact and and leaving a legacy so that people can remember you and say you know i remember this person when they were here they did these things they did it and i think that's kind of what we see with nipsey like a lot of people are remembering the good things that he did and the music that he made and not really leaning on this kind of criminalized past of him being a part of the gang culture so it shows that you can still have that identity but you can still leave a good legacy right a positive yeah. legacy so hopefully people it's hopefully people you know yeah hopefully people can hang on to that yeah but something I think also people should account for is your past does always follow you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So make sure in your past you make everything good and make sure everything's straight so something like this won't happen to you. Because people are gonna be people at the end of the day, right? Yeah. People have their own jealousy, envy and all yeah. that that comes with you obtaining the success. Yeah. So you got to make sure everything's squared away in your past so your future will be great and prosperous. And I think that's one of the precarious things about life is that, you know, you can make mistakes in the past and you can turn it around for good and people will still be that way and it still might lead you there, right? Or you can be good in the past and be good in your present and it still leads you there. And that's why life is so precarious because you never know when it's gonna end. And you never know when somebody might be plotting on you or somebody just doesn't like what you're doing or you know, whatever the case may be. And we know that this was one of like his close people. They're saying it was one of his close people, right? He's in pictures with them and it's, it still kind of led him there, right? So that's one of the precarious things about, you know, life is that kind of no matter what you do, it's, it, Death is inevitable. Both sides of the <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, and that really sucks, right? A new moon and a new moon. Yeah, That's yeah, and it sucks that you know you can you can kind of turn your life around, or you can be on the straight and narrow, and it just still you know people. There are just some really hateful people out there, you know, and and it sucks that you might not know who they are when you meet them, but they they exist. Let's just say that, yeah. So from an artist's perspective, myself and maybe some other people around the table, mm -hmm. how important is ownership as an artist? Like owning... Owning your masters, oh, owning yeah. your own product. Um, I think it's everything, right? Um, like, you know, post his death, all of his streams went up, right? And people were saying keep doing that because he owns it. And so that's something that was so... And kind of his children and his family will be able to reap those benefits. But we've seen people who have had huge commercial success I'll use Lauren Hill because I'm a child of you know growing up in the 90s the miseducation of Lauren Hill was like one of the first rap albums to win best album but she didn't own any of it 
And so when she went back on tour, right, she had to change basically everything about these songs because she couldn't use that music because she didn't own it. And people were saying that was part of the destruction of Lauryn Hill, aside from, you know, things with mental health or whatever. But the fact that she didn't own that stuff, she couldn't use that legendary stuff. It's legendary. It's a legendary album. It's the only album she made, right? And so now people are talking about, you know, her, her part of the process and how many people, you know, people wrote the music for her. People created all these things for her. But the bottom line is that she did not own it. And so the Lauryn Hill that we knew is not the Lauryn Hill that was on tour at all because everything that we kind of vibed with, the sound of the music that we know and love, she couldn't use it because she, she didn't own it. And so I think that, you know, with any type of creative endeavor, owning your stuff is, owning your stuff is like paramount, you know? Especially if you're out here trying to make money, you got to own your stuff. If well, not, then, yeah, Honestly, yeah. yeah. It's like I know from personal experience that uh, once you once you get to a certain extent, you're gonna always want more as an artist. Yeah. So like, let's say you have a, a, a music video that goes like viral. I mean, you're seeing you're seeing the results and the fruit of your labor as far as like trying to become like more respect it in your craft yeah. but then when you look at it from a standpoint of like business you're like okay i got music out here that i'm not getting anything off of except yeah. for that emotional reaction of feeling like validated to right. see like clicks beside your name you're right. not really getting anything monetary or in these days that's what people find substantial yeah. nowadays like in the rap community i feel like a, a lot of focus is on like what you have as far as assets, you know what I'm right. saying? And once you reach that level, it's kind of like, okay, you gotta find a way to surmount it or pass it. Right. But it's just hard trying to like figure out how to gauge that, you know what I'm yeah. saying, as an artist. I mean, and when you think about wealth building, like you always wanna make your money make money for you, right? And if you're not in charge of the money that you have from the beginning, then that, you know, that hits a lot of different hands before it gets to you. So ultimately, like, you want to be in charge of your own stuff. That's why Chance the Rapper was like, I don't want a record deal. Because I get all of the money for me because I own all of this stuff. I'm in charge of whatever, right? Um, and there are a lot of lyricists that kind of talk about, you know, these kind of payola schemes and, like, 360 deals that go through a lot of different hands before they get to you, right? In a space where you might not be a platinum selling artist, you know, if you only get 35 cent off of a spin after it's divided up by all of these people and you only got a thousand spins, right? We're not talking about millions of spins, right? We're talking about maybe thousands, you know, couple of thousands, tens of thousands, right? A hundred thousand spins is a lot for an amateur artist, right? And now we're talking about being more mainstream when you think about numbers like that. So for those starting up, own your stuff, be in control of your own stuff, right? And be careful with the people that you have around you because they will, you know, push you into things because they might get something out of it, right? So, yeah, owning your stuff is, I'm an advocate for owning your stuff, definitely. So, I know your time's a little limited, so I got one more one more question for you. Okay. A message for anybody out there, artists, non-artists, to go on through life and just remember? Um... I've been trying to just be more positive in general. Like I realized that um, the ability to be negative is so easy and, and not negative about anything specifically, but just negative in general, you know, talking negative or thinking negative thoughts, right? So I've just been trying to be more positive in general, right? And live a life where love is at the beginning of that. Um, and since I've been doing that, like, you know, I'm a PhD student, so like anxiety and stress is all time high, right? And I go to therapy to kind of deal with that. But just in general, I physically feel better because I'm not har har harboring as much negative energy, right? And my relationships with friends have gotten stronger, right? I'm building better bonds with people. So like, be positive. 
live a life full of love and just literally work every day as if it's your last because you never know when you never know when your time is going to be up and you always want to have a legacy that people will remember in the positive right so yeah be positive love people live life to the fullest all right and that's it all right i appreciate y'all for having me on this is my first podcast <laughs> so i appreciate that okay. and where can the people find you if they want to reach you um on twitter and instagram um i'm at kenny six cents that's k-e-n-n-y-s the number six c-e-n-t-s um yeah i'm usually i'm usually there one of those okay. two places so yeah. um yeah follow me i'll follow you back and we can dialogue some more appreciate it all right thank you all right thank y'all for having me you're welcome I appreciate it man. I feel perfect surrounded by serpent circles. I feel like I'm in the loop. Uh, the earth is a serpent to the circle, then the world wouldn't go round. That's the life I feel like y'all don't need to wait, wait, wait. You love me too. I see the proof. I was wondering if death is so close to slumbering, then why should I ever let the sun come in? Uh, God, let me be real for you. If life is fake, what is real to you? But I feel like you must be black, cuz. Uh, if I was fake, they probably would have killed me too. I often think my habits gonna have me asking for forgiveness. I hope I change. I see daggers dripping with open brains and black and liquid. I believe aliens be kidnapping you and switching bodies with them. Yeah, they be trapping. My cousin is cool. I was just chilling with them. Uh, but I'm so paranoid. I probably snapped it and turned around. I had plans to kill me if you ever start acting different. I know I have problems, but I deal with them. Life is poker, and I'm the joker. No Heath Ledger, I feel different. I'm still chipping, cause my high school partner went to prison before they even got to give him a visit. Damn, snakes is gonna leave the jungle for faith and believe in hunger. My mom just as paranoid as me. She think we hiding secrets from her. Pause, I think my enemy is hiding secrets from me. I carved the night, kicking through carbonite, seeking the guarded mice. Prison cell, be cool as blocks of ice. On top the grill, and I just untied my mind. But I hate to warn you, snakes are on you. Me and myself talking different voices. Y'all make different choices. Damn, they never correlate. But damn, my hope is good because I can get the poison. Equality and optical illusion on the obstacle course that humans race to humans race. To guys, we look like fumes in space. To whom embrace, we should all. I'll be good. The system shall do what you expected to do. The present should be what you expected to move. If I gave you a rainbow for your birthday, I expect you to lose your mind. Lose your mind. I'm losing time. I choose this time to do you and mine. It's been fed. We all enslaved to politics. We all putting poison into them polymers. Choices, man. I never followed them. Ever, ever, or forever. I, I would never show, sure, never lie. Or never die I live on the world Whoever side Whoever side I land on a hope But it's yours yeah, Hope they realize I think about, 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 I, I think about, think about, think about, think and think about, think and think about, think about, think about. I drift away to an empty space between consciousness and a dormant state. I try to listen to more lectures and no point pressing, point break range with shot and investing. I don't know who's invested, but it's me. I got no proof.